I'm Brother Lars Jordan, pastor of the New Bethel Baptist Church, located at 2729 Oak Grove Road in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And today our Sunday School lesson for April the 14th, 2019 is Call to Remember. And another topic for that is Remembering Good Deeds. And our Bible scriptures today are taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 26th chapter, verses 1 through 13. And we're still in this, this area of study, this quarterly theme of discipleship and mission. And uh, the, our immediate uh, unit of study is call to ministry. Now, we have gone through the call to mission, and, and we're in this discipleship and mission, so we're still in the, the same type of, of thing. There, the ministry is just the, the actual putting legs and foot work to the things that we have learned being a disciple. As we have been going over in the previous weeks, to be a disciple is a learner or a pupil under someone. And that, at this case, these were men that were under Jesus Christ, learning what he was teaching and, and other people and uh, us now, even learning the word of God, disciples. And, and we learn the word of God so that we can go out and put legs to those things that we have learned. We didn't just learn how to fish so that we can never go out and, and cast out, get a rod and cast a bait out into the water and try to reel in a fish. So when we learn the word of God and Jesus makes us fishers of men and, and we go out with the word of God with all the equipment that we need because that's what a learner does. We learn all the techniques, all the things that, that need to be done. And remembering what we talked about a few weeks ago, in order to be a good fisherman, you must love to fish. So if you don't have that good desire to fish, Pray that the Lord will give you the desire to fish for people, to bring them out of that darkness into this marvelous light, into this Christian family where the Lord is, is waiting on them and waiting to, to keep us safe forever and ever, even though we go through the struggles and cares of life in this. If he saves us, we are safe. And we, we're going into this 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 area today where we we know that we're this is the uh, Palm Sunday, and the things that are happening around this the the Passover and getting ready for the 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 Jesus getting ready for his his death his burial his resurrection for the the good news story the good news account to happen the the things that we call the gospel the gospel message is that that Jesus came and died for our sins was buried to carry our sins far away and rose again to defeating the final enemy which was death and the grave. So now we're going into this area called to remember and to, to know what we're, we're, we're understanding about call to remember. We would have to go into the last verse of our, our printed text today, which is that 13th verse. When, when, the, when this lady, more than likely, this is Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus that, that we'll be talking about in this lesson. But, but when she is, is set up, her, her account is set up for a memorial forever, even talking about her even today. So now we go into this 26th chapter, the gospel according to St. Matthew, and it'll actually take us back to the previous chapter just to, to, to cover the, it, uh, immediately what happened there, just an overview, it says, and it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, it came to pass when he finished all these sayings. Now Jesus was finished with his earthly ministry, the, the, the Olivet Discourse. That now he had, he had given this, this end times teaching there in the 24th and 25th chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew. But actually that ministry of, of that, that last sermon kind of take us back to the 23rd chapter to set it up for the things that were about to happen. But now we're in these last days of Jesus's 
life and and he had already came into the city with that triumphant entry into this into this wonderful city of, of Jer Jerusalem and they had cried out hosanna Blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord and the gospel according to St. Luke lets us know that when the people began to shout as Jesus rode in on the back of a donkey and the palm branches were falling out in front of him and, and the people had thrown their jackets and coats and things even on the animal that he rode on but some to make the red carpet that he rode into, into Jerusalem on, not just necessarily red, but, but, but to make a, a, a road that with their coats and, and with the palm branches and, and all of these things that, that they were doing to make this a wonderful occasion as the king. But blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord and the gospel according to St. Luke told us in the 19th chapter verses 39 and 40 that the, 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 the religious leaders around there said, told Jesus to check his disciples and, and get them to stop praising him and, and lifting him up in that way and remember Jesus statement there in the 40th verse of the 19th chapter of the gospel according to St. Luke. He said, if I, if they hold their peace, then the stones would begin to immediately cry out. So nature would take up where man would falter. So now Jesus is into the city. He's getting ready, preparing for his, his death. And now he had finished those end times teaching in the 24th and 25th chapter, telling about those things that, that were to come. And, and now he gets into, we see that while he's doing this, that this is real close to the day that he is going to give up his life or lay down his life is what he would say for, for our saving. So verse two says, Ye know, he's talking to his disciples, room at the end of the, of the, of the first verse uh, here in the 26th chapter. He says, ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Okay, now we're into, into this day. We, we have come to this, this feast, this celebration here in Jerusalem. The, the 12th chapter of Exodus tells us about the time when the people were preparing to get out of, out of Egypt and, and, and going out into, into freedom, leaving, leaving the Pharaoh behind. And, and now they were going out, the Israelite nation, this, this group of people that had grown to a great number. And now they were going out. And that night before they left, remember that night before they left, they had prepared and, and put do blood on the door lentils and, and above the door. And that was the Passover so that the, 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 the death angel would pass over the place that had the blood represented on their doors and the firstborn of that household would not be killed. But, the first, but the, as the death angel went through, it killed uh, all the other firstborn even the animals that didn't have the blood on the door lentils. And, and so now we see that after two days is the feast, this feast, this Passover feast, this, this celebration of this time, when that night before they, they were to go out that next day, as the deaf angel would come through, they had the, the lamb that, and, and this, this, this feast that they had, would rep would be a representation of that, so they would share in the same type of meal that they had before they left out of Egypt the next day, and that would be lamb, wine, bitter herbs, and unleavened bread. And we'll see that those things begin to represent Jesus's death, burial, and resurrection for us, because He was the Passover lamb. He was that 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 lamb. He he he. And and when we drink the wine. His representation of his blood, the, the bitter herbs were the death spices that was put up on him at his at his burial and his body broken for us that we eat at the Last Supper or the Lord's Supper. And we, we call it the unleavened bread, the bread that doesn't have anything in it to make it rise. Something that the people were doing that night. So they, did, they didn't wait for bread to rise. They were exiting Egypt, that as we get the word Exodus. And now the, this is the feast of the Passover. It came 14 days 
of the days of, of, of Nisan on the Jewish calendar. So now this this is our the late March, early early April, and this is what 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 we call we get to the day of, of Easter as we come to this. This is the, the Palm Sunday that we we're in for this lesson and now just eight days is what this feast represented. And eight days of, of, of celebrating the Passover or even celebrating them leaving out and celebrating them the, the barley harvest coming in. So it was the, the, the Passover and the, the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread or the harvest of celebrating the barley coming in. So now, the Son of Man is to be betrayed, betrayed and crucified. Jesus says this, and he gives this, and this is the third, uh, this is the fourth time that he said this. He had told them already on on three occasions about his his death, how how these these things were going to happen. There in the 16th chapter and the 17th chapter and the 20th chapter, he had told his disciples that these things were going to happen, and maybe they weren't listening. But we're going to find one in just a couple of verses that may have been studying as she sat at the feet of Jesus and really was taking in what he was saying. So now he says that he was going to be betrayed and crucified. So then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas. Now, Caiaphas is is the high priest at this time. He would serve in this capacity for for approximately eighteen years. In other words, he would be someone that the Roman people would be satisfied with in this position. His his father in law Annas was the was actually the the guy that was supposed to keep that job for life. But the Romans didn't like it like that, so they so they allowed this man, who was a Sadducee, to take in this position, and he would do everything he could to try to keep the people from uprising and and causing the Romans to come down on them. And but now he was more concerned about their position. So now the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders, and the, they they met in his palace. Now. It's more than likely at nighttime and they can't or, or it was going to get dark and they can't be at the temple at night having these type of things going on, having meetings going on, uh, especially like this where they were plotting to have a man taken out. They assembled there together in his palace. And Caiaphas, this this would be that man that would would make that that prophetic message, not under his own unction. It would be the spirit of the Lord that would cause him to say it is expedient that that for us that that one should die for the people. So it was he that this Caiaphas that said that, and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. Now they had a they had a plan. They were there to try to take Jesus at, at and uh Dallas is the word subtlety in this in this text right here, the, the Greek word for, for, for subtlety, which means trickery or deceit or even craftiness, not smooth like it might be in, in, in other places that in, in our English English language, but here it, it actually means trickery and deceit. So now they wanted to t take him by trickery and deceit. Why would they need to take Jesus by trickery and deceit? Couldn't they find something that he was doing wrong and actually take him like that? Well, they, they, they couldn't find anything on him. They couldn't find anything that he was that he was doing. The 22nd chapter, verse 46, told us, and no man was able to answer him a word, neither trust any man from that day forth, ask him any more questions. They couldn't find anything on him. They couldn't get him. This they found this lamb to be unblemished. Remember, when a when a priest would get a lamb for the day of sacrifice, that priest would search that lamb over, rubbing his legs all up and 
and down and over his head and down his body to see if this lamb has a blemish or anything. So the way that, that Jesus was tested as the ultimate lamb was the question that came at him. They were hurled at him, not only by the Pharisees and the scribes, but also even the Sadducees that didn't believe in the resurrection came and hurled questions at him also, and no man could, could break him like that. They could find no blemish in him at all. And it would be Pilate that would actually come to terms with the fact that, that he could find no fault in Jesus at all. So now they needed to try to take him by trickery. So they need to try to find something on him, even though he may not have done it. We just need to find something so that we can lay our hands on him. They wanted to take him by subtlety, not just to take him by subtlety, but the end of the fourth verse says they had a reason to, that they wanted to take him. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill Jesus. But understand one, one thing about this. Jesus had already proclaimed in the 10th chapter of the gospel according to St. John in the 18th verse that no man taketh my life from me but I lay it down of myself. I, I'm laying my life down for, for the people to, so that the people can, can trust in me, lean on me, my death representing that being substitutionary because they, they were not perfect. They will not be found good enough to die for their own sins. If they died for their own sins, they're just going straight to hell. But he would die substitutionary, and that would be on our behalf because he was the unblemished lamb. Verse 5 says, but they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. Their choice was that, that, that it not be on the feast day, that it not be during this time, these eight days of the, the day of Passover starts and, and then the next days or seven days are the days of the feast of unleavened bread. And But now they said not during this time, not, not during the feast days because there'll be an uproar among the people. But they weren't the ones that were in charge at that time. God was in charge of this all the time. Now, so we move into this next section and we get to see the contrast of those people wanting, wanting something from Jesus and, and coming to Jesus, wanting to, to trap him as, as Jesus was meeting with his disciples, telling them about how he was going to die in just a couple of days. And the, the, the religious leaders were actually plotting his death. Who were those religious leaders? It says the chief priests. Now, it's, it's, it's got the S after priest because it wasn't just one. We just spoke, forestated that Caiaphas and his, his, his father-in-law, who was Annas, who was really in charge, and th that other group of, of, of people there, the scribes, the people that were the doctors of the law, the law of, the, of, of Moses, the, the, the doctors that, that knew the, the, the word of God, the law and the prophets, they had read these things many times because they had written them many times. They were scribes and the elders of the people, not just the elders, but the elders of the people, the people that the, the ones that the people looked up to. And yes, it was actually kind of political at that time, too, in the religious world, because they did have the Roman authority at, to to. to answer to at that time. So now we get into this. Now Jesus, verse six, now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, now Jesus go, goes to Bethany, probably the place where he spent the, the nights here before he went to the grave, it would, would probably at the house of Lazarus, Mary and Martha. And he, now he's in Bethany, but now that they're not at their house this time. He's at the house of Simon the leper. Now, Simon the leper, that's just stating where he was at one time. More than likely, he wasn't a leper anymore. The Lord probably had delivered him from this and healed him. And when the Lord heals you, you're no longer that. But they identified this man as that by calling him Simon the leper, putting that, that title on him in that type of way, the Simon. Now, at the house of Simon the leper, verse 7 says us, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head 
as he sat at meat. Now, while he was at Simon's house, he's here at, at, at Simon's house enjoying a, a, a meal with him. There comes in a woman, maybe in the midst of a room full of just men, and she has an, an alabaster box, a box that had precious ointment in it or a translucent jar is what it was. And the other gospel writers tell us that she broke it at this time. Instead of trying to let it trickle out and pour it on him, uh, uh, drop it at a time, she broke it and she poured it on his head. Now, John tells us in, in, the, in the 12th chapter of, of the Gospel according to St. John, verse, verse 3, that she also put it on his feet and she, she poured it on his head and his feet as he was there eating meat, as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, to what purpose is this waste? Now, they were considering this, or we'll find out in the gospel according to St. John, verse, uh, the 12th chapter, verses 4 and 5, that it was really one disciple that was more concerned about this than anybody else. And this was a, a precious ornament. It was something that was precious, a precious perfume, a precious uh, fragrance that was imported from the mountains of India and, and more than likely cost as much as a year's wages. So this was something that was special, but they being upset about it, they, they said, to what purpose was this waste? Now, I want to warn you, when, when they began to ask uh, what purpose is this waste when something was poured out on Jesus, whether it's words of, of, of love and words of, of sympathy, words of, of caring about the Lord and, and letting him know that we love him because he first loved us, whether it's anything like that, 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 that these people came to terms with, they were indignant about it. And they, they felt like it was a waste. It's a waste when you pour out that adoration and veneration on the Lord. But I want you to understand that this man that was more concerned about this than anyone else, in the Jesus' prayer, the real Lord's prayer, in the 17th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Saint John, the 12th verse, Jesus would... Uh, 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 recognize him as the son of perdition. That would be Judas Iscariot. That, uh, it, he would recognize him as the son of perdition, which literally means the son of waste. So now he was saying that this was a waste, pouring this out on Jesus when he himself was considered a waste he, because he had wasted his life by, by betraying the Lord is what he was going to, going to do. So now we see that Verse 9, for this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. Now, this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. Now, one of the things that we know about, about, uh, about Judas is because John told us he said he carried the bag. So, in other words, he probably was pilfering off of the money that they had as a group together. But now... He, he's looking at it and maybe if that money would have came in a whole year's wages into the bag, that, that would have been more for him to, to kind of slide his hand in every now and then and take some out because we know shortly he will betray the Lord for 30 pieces of silver. But now we see for this ornament might have been sold for much and given to the poor. Now, we, we see the poor being looked at at this time. Sometimes we just throw things out there so it would look good to the Lord, but he can see right through what, what we're saying. Remember, Jesus had already told them, if you come to me and you don't already hate others more than you love me, in other words, prioritize it. He, didn't, he wasn't really telling people to, to hate their family, but he was saying in priority, even with the poor, he must be the priority in our lives is what what we see here that that's in the gospel according to St. Luke 14 chapter verse 26 when he was talking about that 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 we have to love him more and, and he said hate not them uh uh 
to hate our family. And, and he wasn't really talking about hating them the way that we see hate, but he was talking about in priority. In, uh, we care more about him than anything else. So now, verse 10 says, when Jesus understood it, he said unto them, why trouble ye the woman? For she has wrought a good work upon me. Jesus looks at them. She's taking priority. Yes, the poor are there. And yes, the Passover time was a time when, when many shared in and helped the poor. We know that Jesus had to run some out of the temple because they weren't trying to help the poor. Many had journeyed to Jerusalem to, and they didn't bring a lamb with them because they would have they would purchase a lamb when they got to the temple. But they had, had, had these exuberant prices when they got there and they probably wasn't able to afford them. And Jesus went in and turned over the money changes tables and stuff and said you have turned my father's house of prayer into a den of thieves but now we see that he when when jesus understood he said why are you why are you troubling her like this because obviously she heard the conversation that they were having that they were saying about her at this time why are you troubling her so he takes her defense at this time for she has wrought a good work upon me. She has done something very good for me. Why is it good for him? He's going to explain that. And he's going to, first of all, give the priority. He says, verse 11, for ye have the poor always with you. Deuteronomy tells us that as they're going to always be there with you. And me, ye have not always. Now, he was talking about in the physical because those of us that, that know that we that we have trusted the Lord as our, as our Savior, he has placed his Holy Spirit inside of us so we have the Lord with us all the time. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. But now she has come before him for in that she poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. She, he said here, she has poured this ointment on my body. She did it for my burial. Maybe she understood something that everyone else wasn't grasping at that time. Or maybe she was just a true worshiper. Remember, Jesus had already talked to the woman at the well. And he had let her know that the, the true worshipers would worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. True worship is going to take something from you. True worship comes in the form of brokenness. Some, when we realize where we are, really are, how we couldn't do it on our own, just as I am, I don't have anything for my defense, but thy blood was shed for me. But in brokenness, she came to him and she broke her alabaster box, the thing that meant so much to her, which brings in the next thing because brokenness is going to cost you something. And she, the most, probably the most expensive thing she had at that time was what was in that bottle and in that translucent bottle at that time. So true worship Worship is something that will break us when we discover that we are broken. We come to him in brokenness and we find that it is costly for us, but we won't find that until we find ourselves in brokenness, until we come to him in that type of way. But remember, when you come to him in brokenness and when you have given the, the most of yourself, when you have said, all I have I, is, is tied up in the person of Jesus Christ, some won't understand you when you when you tell them that 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 is Jesus plus nothing that saved me. Some won't grasp it when you are really truly worshiping the Lord. And it'll always be beneficial for you when you come to the brokenness, when it costs you something, but the Lord is the one that paid for your sin debt, but now you you have given yourself to him and that's all we can give myself I give to thee tis all that I have to give the the hymnologist says but it, and you will will be misunderstood they couldn't understand why she would give something so costly but it was beneficial it was definitely beneficial because Jesus said this was for my burial and he's and and look at, at what happens here the the fragrance filled the house so it didn't just bless her 
everyone in the house that was around this situation, even those that were kicking against it, some of them were able to grasp this. Only those that were just totally against it couldn't get any part of this because the gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter, the third verse, let us know that the fragrance filled the whole house. So when, when you actually have your moment of worship, if someone doesn't kick against it, maybe they'll begin to worship the Lord too. And you'll find that it's beneficial for them also. And they'll find themselves in brokenness too. She poured this ointment on him and it was for his burial. Now they would show up to, to anoint his body at, on, on the, the next day of the uh, after his, his burial. And they'll be too late at the, the third day after his burial. They'll be too late because he would have arisen and he won't be there so that they can anoint his body. But look at her. She's getting out in front and anointing his body for the burial. And verse 13, Jesus gives her a special, something special here. He says, verily I say unto you, or truly is what verily means there. Truly I say unto you. Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, the gospel, the word of God, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, she anointed his body for the burial, uh, before his burial, wherever this gospel is preached, there shall also this, that this woman has done, be told for a memorial of her. Because it was so special, because she found herself in this position, because she she humbled herself enough to know that it's going to, to, to cause me giving myself away to the Lord because he gave everything for me. And yes, I will be misunderstood, but it'll always be beneficial and the fragrance will fill the house. Called to remember. We are called to remember this. This is contrast with the other guys. She prepared him for burial in a, in a special way and uh, probably sitting at his feet, even recognizing the fact that he would rise again. But the others there in the, that were getting ready in the fourth verse was trying to prepare him for a burial because they wanted to kill him. But he was actually giving his life for the saving of the world. Father God, we do thank you today for the study of your word. And Father, we pray that this word will simmer on our hearts and minds. And Lord, help us to be remembering the good deeds that you have done for us, Lord, securing our salvation with your own precious blood. Father, we do pray that you will search our hearts, forgive us of sin. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining the Sunday School Lesson Review. Hope to see you next week. God bless you all.